You know what we love here at Skillcapped? PvE. Raiding truly is the pinnacle of World of Warcraft, demanding a level of strategy and skill that gladiators could only dream of. <laughs> nah, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> you should have seen your face. Here at Skillcap, we hate that cringe dragon slaying stuff, but if we had to pick an expansion where PvE was the most enjoyable, it would probably be Wrath of the Lich King. Which is fortunate, because for better or worse, PvE is going to be a core part of Wrath Classic. Arena is going to be filled with PvE gear, which gives the experience of gearing your character a flavor that modern expansions lack. In Wrath, you didn't replace your cosmic badge with an eternal badge, you replaced your needle encrusted scorpion with a motherfucking deathbringer's will. The process of of gearing in PvP and Wrath is less of a checklist and more a matter of playing the hand you're dealt. So today at Skillcap, we've already paid the best players to figure out the absolute best ways you can gear fast in Wrath to immediately outskill everyone in Arena from day one and beyond. However, unlike Shadowlands, you won't be able to just stomp people by outgearing them in Wrath PvP. So just being decked out in the best gear might make you look and feel fancy, but it still won't be enough. Luckily for you, we've worked together with literally the highest rated players in the game who have played Wrath non-stop for 10 years on private servers to create the most effective courses that will allow you to master your class stupidly fast. From damage to crowd control to the most advanced tips out there, you won't be disappointed. And the best part is, you're guaranteed to climb 400 plus rating when actively using Skillcapped, so be sure to check us out after this to make your shiny new gear actually useful. Anyway, getting back into it, this video is going to be a very top-down overview of what is available, not necessarily what is good for your spec. If you want a comprehensive gear guide for your specific class, be sure to check out our class guides and starter courses. So you've just hit level 80. What gear is available to you and what should you be prioritizing? On the off chance that Jeff Bezos is watching, let's start with items you can buy with gold. The jewel crafting vendor in Dalaran will sell you 200 item level epic rings. Get used to hearing this number, 200 item level is the lowest level of epic item, on par with heroic dungeons and Noxramus 10 man loot. The starting price for these rings are 8.5 thousand gold, but the vendor will offer you a discount based on your Kirin tour rep, down to the meager 6.8 thousand at exalted. New or returning players will likely have better things to spend their gold on, but 8,000 gold is chump change for TBC Classic Raiders and their GD KP earnings. The rings can be traded in for upgraded versions over the course of the expansion, but they always stay behind the gear curve. Moving on, the auction house in Season 5 will also feature a particularly large amount of bind on equip epic items for players to purchase. The launch raids are filled with BOE drops. 213 BOE bracers can be bought with badges of valor, giving players a way to turn their unwanted badges into gold. At launch, professions will be able to craft 200 eye level epic BOE pieces. Some of these items punch well above their weight, but you won't see many of these items appearing on best in slot lists. Like with the Kirin Tour rings we just saw, these these items are either a good head start or a way to prop up a particularly weak slot. They aren't super desirable on their own merit, with one exception. Dark Moon card greatness, as the name implies, it's uh, pretty good. It's stupid good. It's the kind of good that can only happen by accident. Every strength and agility user is going to want this trinket, and some players might not replace it until Season 8 when Ice Crown Citadel opens up. Greatness can be bought either directly as the trinket or by trading it in a Nobles deck, which is created by combining 8 Nobles cards. In the early days of Wrath Classic, the completed decks will likely be sold at a premium. You'll save money by buying the individual cards. It's also a standard practice to trade cards, so if you see someone selling a card under value, you can always pick it up and look to trade it for a card you need. Getting a hold of a Greatness card is going to be an ordeal. It is going to be by far the most desired BOE item at launch, and you can expect to see it all over our BIS lists for Season 5. Finally, Professions will be able to craft blue quality PvP gear. Most of the sets will be 187 item level, but JC and Tailoring will be able to craft 200 item level pieces. These will be significantly cheaper than everything else we've talked about so far, and will likely be an affordable option for players after a few weeks or months. Of course, PvP gearing also will include the iconic Winter Grasp zone, so how does it factor into your progression? You will want to be doing Winter Grasp as soon as possible. It will be one of the best sources of honor, along with having some pretty snazzy rewards. Winter Grasp has two currencies associated with it. Winter Grasp Marks of Honor from participating in the battle for Winter Grasp itself, and Stonekeeper Shards, which are rewards from weekly quests and drop from dungeon bosses while having the essence of Winter Grasp buff. 
with Wrath Classic, Blizzard has announced changes to how Wintergrasp functions that will see players essentially always have access to Essence of Wintergrasp. At launch, Wintergrasp marks will offer eye level 200 rewards, which aren't particularly exciting. However, each new season will introduce new rewards to Wintergrasp, which will quickly become very nice for new characters. Season 6 will introduce the Titan Forged Runes, which are PvP medallions with an offensive stat rather than resilience. This is a desirable option for non-human races who are looking to drop some resilience. The Stonekeeper Shards allow you to purchase a variety of PvP-oriented gems and enchants. The enchants are significantly easier to acquire than their PvE equivalents. They will still require PvE to earn, but believe us when we say you would rather farm 10 Wintergrasp Shoulder Enchants than 1 Sons of Hodir Enchant. Now, let's talk reputations. As you'll have come to expect after TBC Classic, reputations are an important part of Wrath of the Lich King. For PvE players, mandatory head and shoulders enchants are gated behind reputations. Thankfully, the Winter Grasp enchants we just talked about give PvPers a cheap and easy alternative. However, if you want to be taken seriously in raids, you will want to have the appropriate PvE enchants. Certain factions have unique ways of gaining reputation with them, such as daily quests, but the dominant source of rep is going to be through dungeon raids. You earn reputation for a given faction by wearing their tabard, which can be purchased from their quartermaster. These rep grinds will take quite a while to work through, but you'll be pairing them with other activities so it shouldn't be too painful. For PvE players, the first tabard they would pick up would be based on their desired helm enchant. So melee players would go with the Knights of the Ebon Blade, casters with the Kirin Tor, healers with the Wyrmrest Accord. For both melee and casters, these enchants feature crit rating, whose value is reduced through resilience. So in the context of PvP, it's likely that most players will prefer Winter Grasp enchants to these reputation rewards. So you might want to consider prioritizing reputations based on the weapons offered. These weapons are the equivalent of blue heroic dungeon drops. They're not good, but in the early hours of hitting 80, it's quite possible that this may be the first weapon to replace your green quest reward. One key faction that we already alluded to are the Sons of Hodir. The Sons of Hodir will be the most common way players acquire a shoulder enchant in Wrath Classic. The reputation is unlocked after quite a lengthy quest chain in the Storm Peaks, something you can knock out while leveling, after which it will become driven by daily quests. In total, it will take you a few weeks to get Sons of Hodir rep to Exalted, depending on a number of factors. The good news is that it seems the Shoulder Enchants will launch as an account-wide item, so you only need to endure this once. Just like with the Helm Enchants, these items include Critical Strike rating, while the Winter Grass rewards offer resilience. Now, Dungeons. As you probably noticed, there are a lot of incentives to do dungeons when you first hit level 80 in Wrath Classic. Unlike in the Burning Crusade, Wrath Heroics are rather forgiving, and you should be fine to begin running Heroic Dungeons as soon as you hit level 80, regardless of gear. The typical rewards are blue quality 200 eye level, with end bosses dropping an epic 200 eye level piece. These epic pieces are equivalent to Nax 10 and Hateful Gladiator gear. Some of these epic items punch well above their weight. One thing to note is that every role has access to an epic weapon from these dungeons. While targeting these dungeons for gear, you will also be earning emblems. In Wrath, emblems had a two-tier system. You had the primary tier that came from the current raid and sources such as your first daily heroic, and a secondary tier of emblems that drop from heroic dungeons themselves. These can be downgraded to access lower tiers when required. In Season 5, Emblems of Heroism offer some solid but unremarkable options. As the expansion progresses, Emblems will reward a much greater selection of vastly more powerful gear, including PvP gear. These items are meant to give PvE players something to spend excess badges on, so their price is pretty unreasonable, but if you simply must have a gear with the word Gladiator in it, this is a way to do it. Now let's talk about Honor. Honor will of course be a major component of gearing in Wrath of the Lich King. Over the course of Wrath, we saw Blizzard iterate on PvP gear. Likewise, throughout TBC Classic, we saw the price of Honor gear hit with hashtag some changes. We wouldn't be surprised at all to see the cost of Honor gear in Wrath Classic tweaked. But there is a lot we can be certain of. PvP gear will have the same three-tier system that will be familiar to players of TBC Classic. Honor will be used to purchase the third tier PvP sets as well as first and second tier off pieces. Let's use Season 5 as an example. You have Savage, Hateful, and Deadly sets of gear. Savage gear is 200 item level blue quality and is purchased entirely with Honor, acquired through Battlegrounds and Winter Grasp. Hateful gear is 200 item level epic quality. This is approximately 15% more powerful depending on the item. These items will cost a combination of Honor and Arena points and in 2009 had modest rating requirements. Hateful off pieces are bought entirely with Honor with no rating requirement. 
Deadly Gladiator's gear is 213 epic quality, and while its core set pieces are bought entirely with arena points, its off pieces are bought with honor. These pieces are expensive, costing twice the honor of their hateful equivalents. The rating requirement for these varies from 1200 to 1500 rating. Deadly is about 11% more powerful than hateful gear. So those are the three tiers of gear. When a new season begins, a new tier PvP gear is introduced, and everything shifts down to accommodate it. The honor grind is significantly more forgiving than in TBC, but time management will be a big factor here. You may find yourself questioning whether it's worth buying one deadly belt or a hateful belt and boots for the same cost. As we discussed in our professions guide, the bonuses from professions are going to be very important in Wrath Classic. You will want to make sure you are finding the time to level your professions and get them out of the way. One thing we left out of that video was a discussion of the profession specific items. The main reason for this is the items are not as powerful as we saw in TBC Classic. There's nothing on the level of Deep Thunder. In TBC, engineers had access to goggles that were on par with Sunwell loot. In Wrath, the only goggles offered are 200 item level, the lowest level of epic gear and comparable to Nax 10 loot. Items like the Twilight Serpent figurine and the Gnomish Lightning Generator are accessible options that may be strong options for jewel crafters and engineers starting out. Finally, be sure to keep an eye on the calendar for certain world events. Certain world events offer some decent gear for very little effort. Brewfest offers trinkets equivalent to the 200 eye level badges of heroism trinkets. Hallow's End offers 200 eye level rings, among other stuff. Love is in the Air offers neck pieces, and the Midsummer Fire Festival offers cloaks. Now you know what to do immediately when you hit 80, let's go over what you should be doing weekly to stay ahead. And speaking of getting ahead of the competition, Skillcapped offers specialized PvP guides at your fingertips from rank 1 players. While everyone else is trying to slowly figure out everything themselves, you can jumpstart the process with Skillcapped, quickly putting you ahead of the competition. Join us today, link in the description below. Anyway, this brings us to the moment you've been waiting for, raiding. Raiding is going to be a core pillar of Wrath Classic PvP. Unlike in Modern WoW, where gear is heavily homogenized, PvP and PvE-oriented gear is budgeted differently in Wrath. PvP gear emphasizes defensive stats, meaning additional stamina and, of course, resilience. Gearing in Wrath is about balancing the competing goals of defense and offense. Some classes may go all-in on defense, while other classes may opt to make themselves more glass cannons. Whether it be Betrayer of Humanity or Shadowmourne, the big-ticket items are all found in the raids. The good news is that raids in Wrath were typically puggable even at the time, and the classic versions of Vanilla and TBC made pugging the top raids into mundane exercises. In Phase 1 of Wrath Classic, we will have access to Noxramus, the Obsidian Sanctum, and the Eye of Eternity. Raids have a 10 and 25 player difficulty. You are able to do both each week. Each difficulty has different loot tables, with 25 man having the higher level and generally stronger loot. Wrath of the Lich King released a lot of raids. Doing them all on both difficulties every week would be a nightmare. While in theory there is no such thing as having access to too much gear, each season is going to have specific pieces of gear that are the marquee pieces. Once your character is settled, depending on your circumstances, you may only need to run one or two raids a week in any given season. Vault of Archivon is a raid instance made with an eye to PvPers. The raid can be found within Winter Grasp Keep, in short, simple, and rewards PvP gear alongside PvE tier gear. Each season adds a new boss to the instance that drops loot corresponding to its season. Note that the deadly gear drop from Archivon does not have the raiding requirement that would typically pair with the item had you bought it with arena points. Vault of Archivon was intended to be Puggable, a slightly more elaborate world boss, so it should feel like free gear. You want to be doing both 10 and 25 man VOA every week. But don't settle for group comps that reduce your chance to get loot. If you're the third warlock in a 10-man Archivon group, bolt for the exit so you don't compete for drops. Finally, let's talk about arena points. Arena points are very similar to conquest points in Shadowlands. It is a currency that is rewarded exclusively from participation in an arena that is used to purchase the best PvP gear. Just like the Burning Crusade, arena points will be awarded weekly based on your arena rating. The larger brackets reward better points, and you will receive your points based on which bracket rewards the most. You will need to queue at least 10 games a week to receive points. Arena points are awarded based on a complex formula. As a graph, it looks something like this, but this is nerdy sh**. For this video, what matters is that more rating in brackets with more players equals more points. Make sure you're queuing games and getting your rating up as soon as possible. You know the drill. 
This whole time you might have felt a bit overwhelmed, but not to worry because Wrath gearing isn't as tricky as it seems. There has always been a history of insanely budgeted PvE items in WoW's history, and if you played BFA, you're probably already used to grinding PvE dungeons and raids for some choice trinkets. But in Season 5, most PvE items are easily accessible for the average player, and the progression system itself feels very unique. These days, PvP gearing has been flattened into its most safe and boring version of itself. We've lost a certain magic. The process of gearing and Shadowlands is linear. All PvP gear comes from these dudes. The destination is never in doubt. For better or worse, Wrath of the Lich King will not be like Shadowlands. Your PvP journey in Wrath Classic will see you storm the beaches of the Strand of the Ancients, slay some dragons, and try to scheme your way to a greatness card like your Mr. Burns. Best in slot is not a certainty. You won't be able to mimic what you see on streams. The best you can do is throw yourself at the game, build the best character you can, and give yourself every opportunity to get lucky. Sometimes you'll win, sometimes you'll lose, but in both cases, you'll have stories. So get out there and slay some dragons. We'll let you off the hook this one time. And after you're done slaying those dragons, you'll be ready to dominate those nerds in Arena with our rating game guarantee. Visit the link below to get exclusive access to premium wrath guides and get ahead of the competition today. Alright guys, that wraps it up for this one. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. As always though, we want to thank y'all for watching. See you soon.